Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Blazor blog series and today we are gonna implement a file upload or an image upload to our blog because what's a blog without some thumbnail images or article images, right? And apparently we are going to do this with Visual Studio 2019 as you can see here thanks to all the voters you can see what you can do when you vote. So uh, I was expecting Visual Studio Code actually, but it seems people want to use, you want to use Visual Studio 2019. And I know there are also people who want to use Rider, but uh, Rider is not available for free, at least not in the long run. It's just available as a trial version, 30 days. And I guess not everybody wants to pay for the IDE. So Visual Studio 2019, it is, it is free of course, and everybody or most of you guys want to use it. So it's Visual Studio 2019. We go back to Visual Studio 2019. And one more thing before we start, thank you very much to all my supporters. Yes, you too. Thank you so much for supporting me and my channel by buying me a coffee. That's something new. Thank you very much, Xamarin007 for the idea and uh, you if you want to support me as well and you like the content I create I would really appreciate it if you buy me a coffee sometime the link is in the video description of course and apart from that I also appreciate really much if you click the like button or subscribe to my channel but now let's move on with the file upload you see it already I've got the create razor component open because what we need here is another component and uh, that's the input file component. And maybe let's add it down here below the URL. So we add another div with a class, this time maybe form control file. We've got a label of course again. This time we call this thing image. And then comes already the new input file component. So that's input file. And this thing takes uh, a, param a parameter, of course, for the event on change. And on change gets a method. And we will call this method on file change because something will happen when the actual file is changed by the user you can see it, it expect it's expecting this method here so let's add it down here in the code block it's an asynchronous method because in a blazor webassembly app the data is streamed and the data is streamed directly into the dotnet code within the browser so we will use a synchronous function of this stream and uh, yeah it's an asynchronous method async task and we called it already on file change. And this thing gets an argument. It's an input file change event args e for the event, let's say. Like that. So, and now what we're gonna do first, we add a format to this thing because we want images and then we're going to resize this image so we need a resized image and we do this with the actual file of that event and here there is this beautiful function request image file async and I think it's funny that there's a little typo here in the documentation the maximum width Not that this is important, but you know, things like that are funny sometimes. Okay, I want to uh, resize the image. Of course, you can do whatever you like with this function and make sure to write the await keyword correct. Uh, I want to resize this image down to 300 of max width or height. And after that, we create a new buffer, which is of type byte array and this gets the size of the resized image and now in the end 
didn't tell you that in the end we want a base64 string so we will not actually save the file on the server we create a 60 uh, base64 string of that image and store that in the database the first what we have to do is open a stream and we do that with a resized image open read stream read async and then a buffer and actually you can use some properties of this file here to display a progress bar for instance if you want that just write it down in the comments maybe i do this next time but in this part i just want to show you a quick way to add a file upload to your application and then we create the actual image data string or well, let's just do it let's call it image data and uh, this is a string and this gets the format of a 60 uh, of a base 64 string so a data colon and then format this is our variable up here and after that we add we add base 64 and then a little function convert to base64 string and here we use our buffer a bit complicated I know I also have to check this and then we got our string and after that We add the image to our blog post and you might have already guessed it there is no actual image in our blog post model so this does not exist we have to add it of course and we will also add a new migration but one thing i want to do before we actually test the upload of the image i want to see if this already works so if we got a base 64 string so this will be our image again the on file change method will be used here in the on change event of the input file component and we define the format and then we resize the image the file comes with the actual event here uh, we create a buffer of the size of the resized image and with that buffer we can open a read stream and from that buffer then we create a base64 string with convert to base64 string and then we've got the string here and store that in the image property of the new blog post which we will create now so we've got the blog post model here there it is and now let's add this new property with prop string image that's it and now we've got the image here great Okay, and now if you would like to test that, it would not really work because we are also trying to receive data from the, the database and Entity Framework would not know what to do with that image thing. Let me just show you that for a second. So .NET Watch run. So we first will have to add new migration and there is the blog and as you you see it already there is a wall of errors and here you see no such column b image and here in the blog welcome to my blog something does not really work and here's also a big big error message something is not working we've got a 500 internal server uh, server error and so on so we have to actually make this migration uh, we can test it this way at least, but what we can do, of course, is we say 
show me just the image and I oh know we can't even we cannot even do that because we receive we try to receive the blog post from the server so let's stop this and add a new migration first so, okay so this works like that .net ef migrations add let's call this image and with that entity framework now creates a new migration with a new up and a down method we will see this in a minute where we can see that the image image that me result loss of data please review yeah okay so we might lose some data but that's not a problem for us here because we actually won't lose any data but we see the new migration file here now so this thing here you can also see that some columns are changed this is actually because of the required attribute we added not in the last episode in the episode before that one with forms and validations uh, so we made the title and the URL a requirement and now you can see that the old value for nullable was true and now nullable, nullable is false because this is required. But the actual change we want to see here is the add column. So the image column is now added of type text and this one is nullable, we don't really need an image and in the down method we see that this is all uh, reverted then and the uh, column image would be dropped by but we need that column we wanted so let's update the database with dot net ef database update and then we've got the column this is done we can actually have a look in the sql browser of course in the sql light browser there's the database we see the image here and when we browse the data we also see it here but of course everything is null now and now let's run the application again with dotnet watch run and then there shouldn't be a problem anymore with receiving all the blog posts from the database i see it already on my other screen here it is you can open the console that's it and now let's go to create and here's our beautiful no new not no here's our beautiful new input file component and i think it's time to actually change the design and the layout of that page. Maybe we do that in the next episode. Let's see. Uh, but anyways, when we now choose file, and I've got this beautiful Blazor logo here and open it, you see this crazy string here and that's the base64 string of that image. You see data, image, PNG, base64 and then this crazy string. We can copy it and we can test that in any of these base64 converters that are available online or we just upload and create this post now but uh, we are not done yet of course well we can save that actually but then we won't see it on the application in the blog so we have to change the blog post razor component and also the 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 post razor component so the the list of all the blog posts and the single blog post so let's do that first and then we test this with an actual image and a storing the data okay anyways so we got the model we got the create razor component here we remove this thing we don't have to lock this anymore and now we've got the blog posts razor here and we do this real quick we just add another diff and in this diff we add an image and the source of this image will be post image and for the list maybe we change the width to two 
like that. And then we've also got another component we have to change. And that would be the post razor. And for that, so we add also an image tag, image, and the source here is the current post image. And that's it. So we saved everything. The page has been rebuilt. And now let's have a look at the blog again. Where is it? Let's go to home. Okay. Let's see, we saved it. And now let's try this. We create a new blog post. My new post with an image. With an image. And we choose the Blazer logo again. Do you see that image isn't that nice? We create this and here it is already. As you can see in the network tab and we filter this now, we go to URL with an image, we get this thing here and here's also our image property, a really, really long base64 string. And now when we go to home, we also see the image here. So this works, but as I said, I think it's time to change the layout a little bit. What do you think? Do you have an idea for that? Write it down in the comments and uh, then maybe we do that in the next part of this series. All right, that's it already. Thanks again to my supporters. Maybe you wanna buy me a coffee as well. I'd really appreciate that. As well as clicking the like button and subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click the bell icon so that you get a notification when a new video is uploaded. And if you wanna dive deeper into Blazor WebAssembly, feel free to have a look at my Blazor WebAssembly full stack bootcamp where we built a classic online browser game where users can register, create units and fight against other users to reach the first rank of the leaderboard. We use Web API, Entity Framework, Token Authentication and more for that project. The link is in the video description below or you watch the two hour preview here on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. I see you next time. Take care.